This is a story about an honest and hard working old couple and their pet dog. The neighbors are troublesome and the dog dies a sad death. The spirit of the dog gives solace and support to his, his master in unexpected ways. In the good old days of the Daimyos, there lived an old couple whose only pet was a little dog. Having no children, they loved it as though it were a baby. The old dame made it a cushion of blue crepe and at meal time muko, for that was its name, would sit on it as snug as any cat. The kind people fed the pet with tidbits of fish from their own chopsticks and all the boiled rice it wanted. Thus treated the dumb creature loved its protectors like a being with a soul. The old man being a rice farmer went daily with hoe or spade into the fields working hard from morning until O Tento Sama had gone down behind the hills. Every day the dog followed him to work, never once harming the white heron that walked in the footsteps of the old man to pick up the worms. For the old fellow was patient and kind to everything that had life and often turned up a sword on purpose to give food to the birds. One day the dog came running to him, putting his paws against his legs and motioning with his head to some spot behind. The old man at first thought his pet was only playing and did not mind it. But the dog kept on whining and running to and fro for some minutes. Then the old man followed the dog a few yards to a palace where the animal began a lively scratching. Thinking it was possibly a buried bone or bit of fish, the old man stuck his hoe in the earth when, lo, a pile of gold gleamed before him. Thus in an hour, the old couple were made rich. The good souls bought a piece of land, made a feast for their friends, and gave plentifully to their poor neighbors. As for the dog, they petted him till they nearly smothered him with kindness. Now in the same village, there lived a weak old man and his wife, not a bit sensitive and kind, who had always kicked and scolded all dogs whenever any passed their house. Hearing of their neighbor's good luck, they coaxed the dog into their garden and set before him bits of fish and other dentage, hoping he would find treasure for them. But the dog, being afraid of the cruel pair, would neither eat nor move. Then they dragged him out of doors, taking a spade and hoe with them. No sooner had the dog got near a pine tree growing in the garden than he began to paw and scratch the ground as if a mighty treasure lay beneath. Quick, wife! Hand me the spade and hoe, cried the greedy old fool as he danced with joy. Then the covetous old fellow with a spade and the old crone with a hoe began to dig, but there was nothing but a dead kitten, the smell of which made them drop their tools and shut their noses. Furious at the dog, the old man kicked and beat him to death, and the old woman, 
finished the work by nearly chopping off his head with the sharp hoe. They then flung him into the hole and heaped the earth over his carcass. The owner of the dog heard of the death of his pet and mourning for him as if he had been his own child, went at night under the pine tree. He set up some bamboo tubes in the ground such as are used before tombs in which he put fresh flowers. Then he laid a cup of water and a tray of food on the grave and burned several costly sticks of incense. He mourned a great while over his pet, him many dear names, as if he were alive. That night the spirit of the dog appeared to him in a dream and said, Cut down the pine tree over my grave and make from it a mortar for your rice pastry and a mill for your bean sauce. So the old man chopped down the tree and cut out of the middle of the trunk a section about two feet long. With a great labor, partly by fire, partly by chisel, he scraped out a hollow place as big as a small bowl. He then made a long-handled hammer of wood such as is used for pounding rice. When the new year's time drew near, he wished to make some rice pastry. When the rice was all boiled, Granny put it into the mortar. The old man lifted his hammer to pound the mass into dug. The blows fell heavy and fast till the pastry was all ready for baking. Suddenly the whole mass turned into a heap of gold coins. When the old woman took the hand mill and filling it with beans, began to grind. The gold dropped like rain. Meanwhile, the envious neighbor peeped in at the window when the boiled beans were being ground. Godi me, cried the old hag as she saw each dropping of sauce turning into yellow gold until in a few minutes the tub under the mill was full of a shining mass of gold. So the old couple were rich again. The next day the stingy and weak neighbor came and borrowed the mortar and magic mill. They filled one with boiled rice and the other with beans. Then the old man began to pound and the woman to grind. But at the first blow and turn, the pastry and sauce turned into a foul mass of worms. Still more angry at this, they chopped the mill into pieces to use as firewood. Why did the neighbors kill the dog? The neighbors when heard about the good luck brought by the dog to the couple coaxed the dog into their garden in hope that he would find treasure for them. They dragged him out of doors and the dog scratched and powed the ground under a pine tree. When on digging the ground, they saw that there was nothing but a dead kitten. They become furious at the dog. They beat him to death and then flung him into the hole. Mark the right item. Question. The old farmer and his wife loved the dog. Mark the right item. Question. When the old couple became rich, they Mark the right item Question The greedy couple borrowed the mill and the mortar to make Educate everyone Sabi ko shikshit karein
बच्चों की शिक्षा के उज्जवल भविष्य के लिए समर्पित सीखो और सिखाओ दीज बुक्स इंप्रूव योर नॉलेज रीडिंग प्रोनाउंसिएशन एंड ट्रांसलेशन स्किल्स